subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss a video from Live Law. Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. I'm Sanya and bringing to you episode 34 of Courts This Week. Journalist Arnav Goswami moved the Supreme Court this week and so did advocate Prashant Bhushan. Allahabad High Court took suo moto cognizance of the Hathras incident. A CBI special court acquitted all accused in the Babri demolition case. This is just some of the most important updates. That's one too many, right? No worries, let's go over them. Top court first. Supreme Court issued notice in the plea moved by journalist Arnab Goswami, challenging the breach of privilege motion against him by Maharashtra Assembly and Legislative Council. A bench led by Chief Justice S.A. Bobde issued notice to the Maharashtra Legislative Assembly and stated that the matter will be returnable in a week. So what really is this breach of privilege motion passed against Goswami? Apparently, Shiv Sena MLA Pratap uh, Sarnayak accusing Goswami of using derogatory language against Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre and NCP President Sharad Pawar in relation to inaction by the state government with the unfortunate death of actor Sushant Singh Rajput. Following this, a 60-page notice was sent to Arnab Goswami stipulating that he has breached the privileges of the Legislative Assembly of Maharashtra. Mr. Harish Salve appeared for Goswami and told the court that the House does not have jurisdiction to issue such a notice against a person outside of the House. Advocate Prashant Bhushan has filed another petition in the Supreme Court, this time seeking review of the sentencing order of August 31st, 2020, whereby the court imposed a fine of Rupee 1 upon him in the Suomoto contempt case. The top court had directed Mr. Bhushan to deposit Rupees 1 with the SC registry, failing which he shall undergo imprisonment of three months and will be debarred from practice in the Supreme Court for three years. Whereas Mr. Bhushan had paid the fine through this petition filed by advocate Kami Jaiswal, he seeks to agitate the punishment in default of the fine. He has submitted that at no point did the court put him to notice that it was contemplating such a drastic action against him. The Supreme Court on Monday orally remarked that the constitutional bench judgment on land acquisition left certain questions unanswered and required examination. Now please understand, this case was not taken up against the five-judge bench judgment in reference or anything. When the matter was called out, it was informed by Solicitor General Tushar Mehta that matters were kept pending and issues were referred to the constitutional bench in the instant case. About 600 matters are pending in the Supreme Court and several other matters are pending in various high courts. While the SG suggested that each case can now be taken up basis facts or be remitted, back to the High Courts, considering the Constitution Bench judgment has come, Chief Justice said that he shall take an appropriate decision after two weeks. The Supreme Court dismissed the plea seeking postponement of the UPSC exam in wake of the pandemic situation. This exam is scheduled for today, that is October 4th. The, the bench refused to postpone the examination and issued directions to the UPSC as well as to the Centre to consider that aspirants who were on their last attempt would be given another chance without extending the upper age limit. The court further noted that as exams had been conducted in the recent past, it was a testimony to the fact that the SOP was followed by the Ministry of Home Affairs in conducting these exams. The Supreme Court has quashed the notification issued by the Gujarat Labour and Employment Department, granting exemptions to all factories in Gujarat from provisions of the Factories Act 1948 relating to daily working hours, weekly working hours, intervals of rest, and spreadovers of adult workers as well as from payment of overtime wages at double rates with Section 59. The bench has held that the pandemic situation cannot be a reason to do away with statutory provisions and that providing dignity and rights for workers by the Gujarat government. In this context, the bench has stated that the pandemic is not a public emergency within the meaning of Section 5 of the Factories Act, threatening security of the country. Let's now go over some top court judgments from the week. The Supreme Court, in its judgment, while acquitting a man accused of raping a woman on the pretext of marriage, observed that misconception of fact arising out of promise to marry has to be in proximity of time to the occurrence and cannot be spread over a long period of time, coupled with a conscious positive action not to protest.
Now, this is very important. The allegation by the prosecutrix in this case was that the accused Maheshwar Tiga has been promising to marry her and on the, uh, that pretext uh, continue to establish physical relations with her as husband and wife. It was also alleged that she had also stayed at his house for 15 days during which she, uh, he established physical relations uh, with him. The trial court convicted him under section 376, 323 and 341 of the IPC. The Karnataka High Court had dismissed his appeal. Length of the sentence of the gravity of the original crime cannot be the sole basis for refusing premature release. The Supreme Court observed while directing release of two convicts on probation. The three-judge bench observed that any assessment regarding predilection or to commit a crime upon release must be based on antecedents as well as conduct of the prisoner while in jail and not merely on his age or apprehensions of the victims and witnesses. Time for updates from the High Courts and other courts now. The Lucknow bench of the Allahabad High Court has taken suo moto cognizance of the Hathras gang rape case, stating that it is an extremely sensitive matter, touching upon the basic human fundamental rights of citizens. The bench of Justices Jaspreet Singh and Rajan Roy has issued notices to the state of UP through additional chief secretary, the director general of police UP, Lucknow, Additional Director General of Police, District Magistrate Hathras, Superintendent of Police Hathras, and has asked them to be present before the court on the next date of hearing, which is October 12th. The 19-year-old uh, victim in this case was allegedly tortured and gang raped by four men on September 14 in UP's Hathras district. It is alleged that the perpetrators cut off the tongue of the victim to ensure that she does not give any statement to the police and repeatedly threaten her family for several days. If a person does not disclose the fact of drug consumption by another person, that will amount to harboring of an offender, said the Narcotics Control Bureau in the Bombay High Court on Tuesday. The submissions were made by the Central Agency to justify the invocation of Section 27A of the NDPS Act against film uh, actor uh, Riya Chakraborty and four others in relation to alleged drug procurement for the late actor Sushant Singh Rajput. The High Court has now uh, reserved the orders on the bail applications filed by actor Riya Chakraborty, her brother Shovik Chakraborty, Sushant Singh's servants uh, Samuel Miranda and Dilip Savant, and alleged drug peddler Abdul Basit Parehar in the case registered by the NCB for allegedly procuring drugs for the late actor. The Bombay High Court has told Rajya Sabha MP and Shiv Sena's chief spokesperson Sanjay Roth to show some grace and question him on the language used against the petitioner Kangna Ranaut in an interview he gave to the News Nation where he allegedly referred to her as Haram Khol Ladki. The matter was adjourned for hearing to Monday. All parties have been asked to place their uh, written submissions as well. A special CBI court at Lucknow on Wednesday acquitted all 32 persons accused of hatching the criminal conspiracy behind the demolition of the Babri Masjid Mosque on December 6, 1992. The acquitted persons include prominent BJP leaders LK Advani, Murli Manohar Joshi, Uma Bharti, Kalyan Singh and others. Special CBI judge SK Yadav in his 2000-page verdict held that the demolition of the mosque was not premeditated and that there was no criminal conspiracy behind it. Those who cl uh, climbed on the dome, they are anti-social elements, not Ram Bhats, the court stated. The Babri Masjid in Ayodhya was demol demolished in December 1992 by Hindu car sevaks who claimed that the land on which the mosque was built was the place of Hindu Lord Ram. A civil court in Madhura, UP dismissed a suit that sought to remove the Idka Mosque on the allegation that it was built over the Krishna Ram Janmabhumi, the birthplace of Lord Krishna. The court of civil judge cited the bar under Places of Worship Act to admit the suit. As per Section 4 of the Act, courts are barred from entertaining pleas seeking the conversion of the character of religious places as it stood on the date of Indian independence. That's all for this week, folks. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. Don't forget to hit the like button and the share button. See you same time next week. Bye-bye. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss a video from Live Law.